Hi everyone. So today I'll be talking about quantum physics in the SPM syllabus. So um, SPM recently added a new uh, con new content called, called quantum physics, or uh, as we know it, mostly may you may hear it, hear it called modern physics as well. But here we call it quantum physics, of course. And uh, the reason why we call it modern physics is because it's relatively new. So it started about 100 years ago uh, compared to, say, Newtonian physics, which has been around for uh, like almost probably 500 years, five to 600 years. So essentially, although it may sound very uh, difficult to grasp at first, because mm, uh, we know it as, as sort of very a very challenging topic which is if it's not uh, uh don't worry because spm only covers a brief amount so essentially for quantum physics there is this concept called the quantum theory of light i'm gonna write it down here the quantum theory of light and we know that light classically has always been described as a wave. Uh, we know that because it, it has the wave-like property, so uh, it can be refracted. It can be uh, can go through dif diffraction, uh, reflection, and things of these natures. These are wave properties, and uh, similar to sound waves, water waves. Uh, things like that. Uh, but then, after numerous experiments in the ninth, uh, in the twentieth century, modern scientists find found out that actually light could be explained as just small quantities, uh, so small particles with uh, with quantized energy. So, so that's that's where this word uh, quantum comes from. Essentially, meaning that these particles so these light particles which we call photons they carry energy so photons are actually masses but they carry energy and these kind of energies are called quantums of energy so there's an uh, equation for this that Planck uh, wrote which describes this quantas of energy Called it's E equals HF, and H is the Planck's constant. It's a constant value, and it has uh, it's about the value is about 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34 joule seconds, which should make sense because this is the frequency of light, and that has units of seconds. Oh, uh, no, sorry inverse seconds or h or hertz right so take this if you look at the dimensions take this multiplied by this you get joules so that's consistent with the left hand side units so using this formula you can see that um since you know that uh different uh, colors of light have different frequencies this means that they carry different energies as well so for example, I'm, you can search up a table, say just search color frequencies of different colors. So you, let's gonna start with red here. Red has actually the frequency of about 4.29 uh, times 10 to the power 14 hertz. So very high frequency. Take this and you put it into the equation to find the energy. So 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34 times 4.29 times 10 to the power 14 you should get uh, the value of uh, about 2.84 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules and you can express this in what's called uh, electron volts so essentially uh, uh, electron volts has a special meaning but we, we're not gonna uh, go through it here it has, uh, but it's a form of energy, and its units, the unit conversion with joules is 1.6 times, about 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. So you might find that some tables 
you see they're expressing electron volts don't worry you just take your joules value divided by 1.6 times 10 over minus 19 uh, and then you get an electron volts so uh, that's the first formula so e equals to hf there is a second formula that comes from uh, things you already know so we know v equals to f lambda so this frequency this is wavelength and v for part uh, for light it's c equals to f lambda because you know uh, there is a standard notation for the speed of light let's see c is uh, 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second so now you can take this and you can sub uh, rearrange it in terms of frequency so you get c equals f lambda c over lambda equals to f so take take back your e equals to hf and then you can substitute this in right hc on lambda so that's your next your uh, other equation and you can check so let's say you have wavelength here red has a wavelength of about 700 nanometers or 700 times 10 to the power minus 9 meters so this is just a conversion you put it into the equation so 6 point Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the power minus 34 then uh, the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power 8 and then 700 times 10 to the power minus 9 you should get a value of about 2.84 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules so consistent with this value here so that's your second formula and compare with other you may compare search up a table and may compare other uh, frequencies of light and then you will realize that actually uh, each one has different frequencies and then therefore different energies so a lower frequency of light will have uh, smaller energies less energies so there's actually a third equation that you need to know and that's uh, how to express the energies of light in terms of power so let's say you have n photons right n particles of light so particles of light i'm gonna write here then we know that e equals to hf so to get the power of light you just simply multiply it by n right n times the energy so n e equals to hf uh, sorry n hf so that's the power and then you can may you may substitute the c equals f lambda inside so you get n h c on lambda so that's your third equation that you need to know so that describes the power the total power of light in one uh, wave packet so uh, this kind of elicits the concept of a wave particle duality right essentially meaning that uh, waves have particle properties and particles have wave properties uh, just like light so light can have light can refract diffract reflect it can also have energies and be described as a particle so what happened was that de Broglie said that uh, since particles any particle has wave-like properties then surely it has wavelengths or frequencies essentially uh, so what, what he came up with was that by describing a particle as a wave what we call a wave function you get actually that they have uh, wavelengths and this wavelength value is called is given by h over p so h is the Planck's constant once again this lambda is the de Broglie wavelength essentially meaning that your particle is going to vibrate and behave like a wave at a certain wavelength so that's any particle uh, not just light uh, by quantum's definition at least so this is Planck's constant and this is p your classical momentum so you know that the classical definition of momentum is p on p equals to mv so this is mass this is velocity so this any any particles can be expressed uh, as a wave has wave like descriptions so you put here h over mv so this tells you that so any particle so whatever your hands your uh 
whatever you have your iPad your table has consists of particles and they behave like waves so they vibrate and they uh, have wave like properties but by this definition here you can see uh, h here is a very small value it's times 10 upon of the order of minus 34 and your velocities are going to be uh, your mass is going to be very uh, for big big things whatever your h is going to be of order of magnitudes of minus 34 so it's going to be a very small wavelength so you probably won't uh, detect it and this is kind of why uh, you can't see uh, particles expressing wave-like properties uh, very often so this is your final uh, equation that you need to know and that's uh, that's it for the SPM syllabus thank you for quantum physics